All right. So definitely let's kick off. It's 9.06 a.m. So um, today, uh, as you can see from the event invite and everything, we are going to be talking about the Emergence SDK and Open Metaverse Discovery Month. Um, so for those who haven't been tracking with us or are here to catch up on what we've been up to this week, um, this week we announced our official integration with uh, the Emergence SDK, which is made by um, some partners of ours at Lamina One at uh, Crucible and Open MetaDAO. Um, these two SDKs basically make it so that Unity and Unreal Engine developers can begin hooking up their experiences that they've created in you know, the two most popular game engines and start connecting them to Lamina One. So this is obviously super exciting. It's empowering world, world builders to begin sort of bringing their experiences onto the Lamina One hub. And um, it correlates with Open Metaverse Discovery Month, which was an idea that we had with the Open Meta team where we were like, okay, with this integration, let's do a bunch of events and, and sort of celebrations and community initiatives that kind of are designed to help um, get people up and running with building and also to celebrate the launch and the upcoming rollout of NFT items and spaces on the Lamina One Hub this fall. So um, I'm joined today by um, Will Carter, our CTO, Gordon uh, Matty, who's our chief product officer, he's Gordo. And then from the open meta side, we've got Beard on the Block, aka Alistair Band. He's their head of community. We've got, oh, Ryan made it up on the stage. So we've got Ryan, who is the CEO of Crucible. Um, and we also have Zapparox, aka um, Chris Lee, who is the Unreal lead over on the Emergence side today. Um, and yeah, today we're going to be answering some questions about the Lamina One and Open Meta partnership, the Emergence SDK, how to get started on linking your game engine experiences to Lamina One, as well as like a bunch of things that we kind of announced in that kind of big announcement post, which is we've got some upcoming workshops coming for creators. We've got two creator competitions coming up this month, as well as we're going to be doing some kind of dual quest bounty program initiatives, um, which we're um, if you join kind of both of our communities, Lamina One and Open Meta, and participate in these workshops and upcoming creator competitions, you can actually kind of get XP from both communities, right? We're trying to like kind of tie in our um, incentivization strategy. So if you're interested in joining another Web3 community, or if you're already a member of Open Meta as well as Lamina One, um, definitely keep your eye on their stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm going to um, hand over the mic, I think, a little bit to our guests um, and do like a bit of a round robin. So I guess to start, um, Ryan, I see you just joined us. Uh, do you want to give a quick intro to um, the audience on who you are and uh, why you're here today? This is also a sound check for Ryan. <laughs> Ah, uh, shoot. It sounds like sound check is not working. Um, so Ryan, Ryan's now on, on mute. Um, but Ryan, assuming you can hear us when you weren't on mute, we could not hear you. Yeah. Alistair, do you want to introduce yourself first since you're off mute currently? Sure. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Alistair Band, community lead for Open Meta. Um, I was also an early investor in the project uh, a couple of years ago as well. So I've known Ryan for, for quite a while, helped out with, uh, with their initial raise as well. Um, I've been in the Web3 and crypto space since 2017, always focused around kind of community, bringing people together. And um, I kind of fell into it by, by chance. A friend of mine from university wanted to run an event teaching people about what Bitcoin and uh, and crypto in general was just at a super high level. Um, and throughout university, I was organizing events, our social sector for the ski club, et cetera. So um, said, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. Um, so we, we found a blockchain beginners together, grew that community to about three and a half thousand people. Um, and we we're getting sort of five or 600 every month. And that got me fully, fully down the rabbit hole. Um, and yeah, really, really excited to be here. Um, love, you know, what the, the metaverse kind of conceptually can be in the future and, and how we're building it to get there. And yeah, big fan of the open metaverse. And I'm super excited about what um, Crucible Open Meta and, uh, and Lamina One are going to do together. Awesome. Thanks so much. And um, 
Chris, uh, or Zapparox, um, as you appear on stage, do you want to give a quick intro to uh, who you are and what you do on the uh, Open Meta Emergent side? Yeah, so um, I've been working for Crucible for about two and a half years, and I've built pretty much the almost all of the um, Unreal side of the plugins. Um, so um, I work alongside, uh, you know, two or three other members of the um, uh, product team, and we make the actual plugins. Awesome. We're really happy to have a, a technical lead on hand here today to dive in. We got a bunch of technical questions from the community on, you know, how they can get started, how the emergence toolkit works. So thanks so much for joining. And um, finally, Ryan, can we uh, try one more time to see if your mic's working? We're, we're currently trying to troubleshoot via WhatsApp. So um, we might have to have to skip through a little bit on that one and, and come back to it. Um, but I can introduce Ryan very, very briefly. Um, Ryan started building Crucible back in 2018 um, with the concept of, of the open metaverse and building some tools around it. Um, very quickly realized that, you know, it's, it's bigger than just a company providing tools. Um, and that's where the idea for open meta um, DAO as a community came around. Um, and within that community, you know, we're, we're looking for builders, creators, believers, um, et cetera, kind of everyone interested in the open metaverse to come together and forge this community and relationships and start building together because it's not just about um, people who can code, people who know Unreal or Unity. Um, it's about those that can create content, come up with ideas. And, you know, there really is a spot for everyone within within the open meta community. So um, if you haven't already joined our Discord, cheeky little plug here, please do. It's discord.gg forward slash open meta. Um, we came through the Outlier um, Outlier Ventures Accelerator program, one of the first ones on there. Um, and yeah, um, I think sort of started really building in in earnest um, kind of around when, when Zapparox joined. Um, but Ryan's been kind of thinking about the open metaverse, I think, since the, the concept first started, maybe back in 2014, and um, took a lot of inspiration from Neil Stevenson. So this relationship for us um, is is fantastic. I hope I did Ryan justice justice just then. <laughs> Amazing, yeah. Well, I think I'll dive into just a question, I guess, from for the L one side. Um, Will Gordon, I'm not going to introduce you guys because I'm sure. I mean, particularly the community knows Will very well. Will's our CTO. He's on here almost every week as well. And Gordon was on here at our last AMA, but he's our chief product officer. But I guess to kick off um, and also buy Ryan a little bit more time for sound check. I mean, Will, Gordon, um, obviously we just kind of announced this integration, but we've been partnered with the Emergence team in Crucible for, you know, quite some time. So L1 team, uh, why choose the Emergence SDK on our end? Um, what, why, um, why make this kind of like one of the big integrations that we're first announcing? I can, I can tackle that I question uh, to begin with. Yeah, sure. I mean, so, you know, obviously we're, we're building infrastructure for the open metaverse, particularly supporting kind of self-sovereign identities and self-sovereign asset creation for creators. And, um, you know, whether, whether those are the digital objects in the metaverse or avatars um, or your social graph or whatever it might be. And the reality is that these things don't manifest themselves for, for consumers and experiences unless they... Uh, get plugged into the applications that are actually being built. And so that last mile is really, really important. The blockchain cannot stand alone. And so we think a lot about the ecosystem that, that is being built around Lamina One and the tooling and capabilities that are offered by those tools to, as simply as possible, integrate with Lamina One to take advantage of the new features and capabilities that we're building. And, um, you know, and, and with Emergence and the team there being so deeply involved in thinking about this last mile problem, and thinking about kind of like the friction involved in um, uh, in integrating with blockchains and really thinking about how blockchains need to manifest kind of the uh, the the assets and the identities in the user experience requires a lot of thought actually and it requires uh, um, uh, the, the thought uh, to actually 
simplify onboarding and remove all that friction at every every point, whether that's getting going for the first time, whether it's building your application for production, um, and and really, you know, the emergence team has built a, a great tool set both for Unity and on Unreal. And although we are ultimately multi-platform and agnostic to the client runtime environment, um, these environments are really uh, kind of driving uh, the state of the art in terms of uh, you know what it, what immersive experiences look like um, uh, on the internet, and uh, and so it's a really important piece of the puzzle for us, and particularly for our early access program partners, um, who, who many of them are building on Unity and Unreal. It unlocks uh, their ability to get going with the Laminar One chain uh, without um, having to, to do a lot of work um, by because of the abstractions that are offered within the Emergence SDK. Hello there. After 15 solid minutes of technical oh, yeah. difficulties, uh, I'm here. Amazing. You made it. Welcome. <laughs> Just in time, actually. Ryan, um, welcome. Again, Ryan is um, CEO of the Crucible team. I guess, I mean, now that your mic's working, I'm going to throw a question at you, Ryan. So um, Gordon just explained, you know, why we chose the Emergence SDK on our end. But, you know, what's in it for Open Meta and partnering and sharing your tech with us at Lambda One? Yeah, so I mean, if any of you were in um, in our Twitter space yesterday, it's it's going to be kind of the same answer, which is is really like Lambda One for us is really exciting to work with because of the people. Um, we obviously share a vision, but that that vision I think goes back years and and even a decade in some cases, where this is like deeply intrinsically a part or an extension of us as people. You know, at Crucible. That's how I've built the team, and I know for sure um, that's how it is over at Lamina One as well. So, you know, for us, uniquely, we've been really laser focused on kind of a a capability, like a technical piece of this that um, can't be uh, skipped over when talking about the vision. But if you look at the landscape, you know, m most people have actually overlooked it. And um, that capability is, you know, the kind of in-engine tooling for, you know, what Web3 primitives are, wallet, authentication, ownership of all these assets, um, a source of truth for that ownership, and also, you know, the, the kind of framework that is needed for the interoperability uh, of these things. So we're at a stage where the tech works. It's... it's um, We've been able to achieve something technically, and, and we've been able to make this as easy as we could possibly make it. And, you know, the easiest in the market to get started, 10 minutes, you know, and you're up and running. Um, you need to learn a little bit about, you know, what Web3 is and how the tech works. But we've really wanted to make it feel more like game development. It's, it's kind of taking Web3 and making it game development and, and doing that for game developers. So... Lamina One as, you know, a company that's building tech and and also working for these these developers, you know, we're just excited now to like get it into the hands of the people that it's built for. Um and also what I something I said yesterday, which I, I really believe, so I'll say it again, is I think what we've built today, like the potential of what is possible with it has not even been scratched by anybody uh in the world including us as a team you know we have tech that that creates new new possibilities and i'm really excited to see people think differently and think big in a way where they're trying new things awesome yeah and i mean us too i mean again as we kind of announced at the top of this uh, spaces and experiences are coming to lab lamina one um and so yeah, we're really excited to get this toolkit into everyone's hands so that they can start experimenting with it. Since we're about 20 minutes in, I'm going to jump right into community questions. So we actually, I just checked the form, we got over 800 questions in by community members over the last couple of days for the Emergence and Lamina One teams about the announcement. So I'm going to dive in um, from Tara Moore, who I see you're actually live in the AMA right now who asked, uh, what are the possibilities offered by this new integration and how is the Emergence Toolkit exactly usable with the Lamina One chain to create these new experiences? Shall I take this question, I guess? Or... 
Yeah, Chris, go ahead. Go yeah. for it. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of exciting things you can do with it. We, I guess we basically have to go through like every feature we have to sort of explain everything you could do. But I guess um, sort of starting from some of the high level, uh, we have like the ability to read and write to um, blockchains. Um, and by that, we mean you can pass in like the ABI of a smart contract, um, any smart contract that is EVM compatible. And uh, you can pass it to Emergence. And from inside of your game engine, you can go, I want to write to the smart contract. And that will send a request to the user's wallet. And they can sign it and um, write and read to that blockchain. Um, we have an avatar system, so you can do interoperable avatars using any um, avatar that has a VRM associated with it. We have an inventory service, which is effectively a indexer plus a way to, um, uh, basically you can pass in like a user's wallet address and find all of the NFTs they own, which is really useful if you're making a game and you want to check if they own something for like token gated access, or if you want to do, um, bringing in like the contents of their wallet, like let's say they have like some um, some PFPs that they want to use in your game, or they've got some um, models like GLTF models or VRM models. Um, you can bring those into your game too, uh, or even music. Like we made an example where it's like a, a jukebox in a room, and um, you can go over to it and if you own a, a um an uh, an nft that has like a an mp3 associated with it like some of the ones that snoop dog made you can bring that in and you can play it in a virtual world um we've got a dynamic metadata system so you can like um let's say you you're making a game and you want to associate some extra data with an nft um at like runtime from your game but you don't it, that nft doesn't necessarily have like a function that you can call to update its metadata itself you can basically stick on extra bits of metadata that so you can go okay this nft now um has like this power up on it or it's been enchanted or something so lots of different possibilities like we we Every time we open it, we basically find, oh, yeah, you could do this as well because we've got this feature and this feature. And they basically, we don't really prescribe like how you necessarily have to use the features. It's just an extra tool in your toolbox when you're making a game. Amazing. That, that was awesome. That, I actually. And that oh, exactly go goes, yeah, that exactly goes to reinforce, you know, what I was saying, which is, is that the, the the potential of what the features can be used for is really just only limited by the imagination of those using them and the context on how that fits into a, 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 an experience or a game or something. Where this becomes the most exciting is by crossing it into creativity. Um, we kind of look at, at our job and certainly like, you know, in this partnership with, with you guys with Lamina One, it's collectively our job to to build that technology, make it as simple as possible, even in some cases try to make it invisible and hand it to the people who, who really do creative things with it. Awesome. Um, I got a question from Alan Byrne Pump who asks, um, you know, which programming languages are supported for development in the Emergence SDK? And like, what are the system requirements for folks using it? Yeah, um, so on Unity, because um, we support Unreal and Unity. So on Unity, it's going to be uh, C Sharp. Um, on Unreal, it's going to be either C++ or Blueprints. Um, and then if you want to deploy smart contracts, we don't currently um, manage smart contracts for you. So if you want to go into that part of it, you need to obviously know Solidity or deploy your smart contracts through some other provider right now. But uh, for our parts of the code, it's uh, Blueprints and C++ in Unreal, C-sharp in Unity. 
Awesome. And uh, we got a question from one of our partners, actually, Renza, who we had on uh, for a previous AA. They're the ones who do like distributed payment networks for um, for game jams, if you can remember that one. Um, but they're asking, is it possible to integrate like payment rails into these environments? We so emergence is a is a, a tool for that allows you to add web three to games that you're making where when when we don't prescribe like an environment as such so it's it's like your game so if you want to add things to your game then you can but it's not it's it, we're not like mona sort of that makes yeah, sense I mean, the, everything that we're do mm -hmm. that we're doing right now is based in the wallet which by definition there's transactions between wallets um we have on our roadmap to kind of expand that out for on ramps and off ramps in the more fiat sense you know moonpay are close friends and we're speaking with exola there there are generally these sort of things that are um that are going to become more adopted as a part of all of this tech but right it, right now it's just the wallets and focusing on the assets in those wallets and i think probably next year in our, on our roadmap we'll think more about the actual sort of payments rails awesome um with the question that we just asked about, you know, programming languages and stuff, uh, Vampo G asks, you know, who will be able to, you know, use and get access to this SDK toolkit? Is it designed only for people who have, you know, experienced or, you know, can beginners also try it? And I think I'm going to answer like the first part of the question, which is like, we've got some upcoming workshops coming up with the team. And I will say um, for that workshop, and I'll, I'll post a link to the workshop for folks who are interested in getting like the deep dive from our teams. But we are recommending that folks like have at least like an intermediate level of knowledge about game engines, as well as like a, at least like, you know, some knowledge about like the Web3 space, just because um, I think you know, and I don't want to steal your answer emergence team, but like you need to kind of know a little bit about how to operate within a game engine and a little bit about Web3 to use the toolkit, correct? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I would say it's not super advanced, but it's you should probably, if you want to start making games that involve Web3, you should probably know how to make games first, right? Um, but Generally speaking, it, it's relatively easy. You don't need to know too much about Web3, and you don't need to know too much about um, Unreal Engine or Unity. Yeah, there's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's not super, super advanced, but we are kind of making an assumption that you, you know your way around these, these engines and have a basic understanding of Web3. Um, that being said, the workshops are coming up on the 25th and 26th of October. So... Um, certainly from the Web3 aspect, um, I can't really comment on the, the games aspect of it, but from the Web3 aspect, you'll, you'd will you be able to get up to speed if you spent a few hours kind of researching into it um, between now and then. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Um, got a question from FA3ZE, so I'm going to pronounce it FaZe. Um, who asks, you know, with this emergence announcement, you also announced Open Metaverse Discovery Month. So they're asking, you know, what's going to be covered in these Open Metaverse Discovery Month initiatives? So I know, Alistair, you and I have been working super closely together to do that. I just dropped a link, actually, to that workshop in the chat if uh, folks want to um, sign up for that. I think that's one of the kind of, like, highlight moments um, that we're planning together. But then also on Lemina One side, we're actually going to be kicking off two creator competitions uh, this month. So our first creator competition, um, spoiler alert, is going to be dropping next week. That is for NFT creators. Um, we basically have a space coming up that's going to be this kind of space lasers arcade game. And um, we're asking community members to submit laser designs um, for it so that uh, they can have their laser designs be some of the first um, assets, NFT assets minted and, you know, sort of placed in a space on Lamina One. Um, a cool way to kind of feature you as an NFT artist and also just like an interesting way to kind of feature our creators within that kind of first sample experience and template. We're going to be dropping again later this fall. And then creator competition number two 
is actually going to come out of that workshop um, that we host together with the emergence team. And that's going to be for spaces themselves. So if you're working on a game in Unity or Unreal and are looking for a place to, you know, put it up or test it or, you know, want, you know, Lambda One's community of, I think we're almost at about 50K builders to kind of kick the tires on it and um, give you their thoughts on it. Um, we're also going to be launching that at the end of October alongside the Emergence team. So, um, and I don't know, uh, Alistair, do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, Emergence Bounties program? I know you guys just also kicked that off and that's part of this equation as well. Yeah, so we've got our Bounties program. We haven't actually kicked it off just yet, but we are launching oh. it very shortly. Um, and mm -hmm. we will be um, running some bounties that coincide with um, with the Lamina One uh, initiatives as well, so that anyone kind of building with with emergence and utilizing emergence in um, any project that we're or they're building, um, you know, we we want to see that. We want to encourage you to to use emergence. Um, you know, it's there's going to be something for everyone, um, in particular the builders, because we want to kind of show traction and really showcase your your work as well, and and bring that to as wide an audience as possible, and you know reward you for for doing so. So you'll be able to earn um, XP and bounty points um, from our side of things, which will be redeemable in the future for. I can't actually say right now. I need to speak to John before I say what they're, they're redeemable for. He's our legal guy. Um, but they will be redeemable for something very, very exciting. Um, probably Ometa tokens, depending on the uh, jurisdiction that you're in, because obviously we've got some um, places that we, we can't give Ometa tokens to right now. Um, but there will there'll be other options um, available as well. Um, and yeah, you know, like there will also have um, bounties around content as well. So, you know, if you want to write some some documentation or a blog about a project that you've seen that where where they've built something um, on Lamina One using the Emergence SDK, and you want to write about that in a blog post, um, there's going to be something for that. Twitter threads, like there really is something for everyone. So if you're not technical, don't don't shy away. Come have a look at our bounties page. We'll share it with you as soon as it's launched. Um, and yeah, super excited to kind of combine these two initiatives together. Awesome. Yeah, as community members, we got to be careful about how we talk about initiatives. But I think, um, you know, we're always doing the doing the good work for the communities, for sure. Um, I actually want to jump into another question just about the Emergence SDK a little bit more, you know, before we kind of dive into, you know, the open metaverse discovery and we also got a ton of questions about just like what the upcoming launch of spaces are going to be but i think um something i really wanted to talk about especially with you ryan is like you know we got a couple of questions from community members asking you know what makes the emergence sdk like different than other sdks out there like why use the emergence sdk as a like there's there's i know that there's there's not too many, you know, SDKs built for game engines out there, but it's definitely been a year where like multiples of these have come out. So I'd love to hear from you, like what, you know, what you, what the Emergence SDK can do for game en engine developers and what makes it different. Yeah, I mean, I think the team behind it is one thing that differentiates it. We have a lot of deep experience in gaming. Uh, the person, uh, Alicia, who's leading the team, was a decade at Ubisoft, kind of running AI systems early on. Uh, moved over to Magic Leap, which she worked with uh, a lot of the, the Lamina One team as well. And just being, being at the sort of very edge of how game engines are being used by filmmakers and, and, and broadly, like... I have a lot of native Web3 um, experience from like 2015. So I think our, the technology is a byproduct of our team and the vision we've had with the technology itself because of, you know, that sort of seasoned experience level of the team. Our documentation is extremely well done. Um, but most importantly, we're trying to make this as easy as it can possibly be and definitely the easiest of anything on the market. Um, there certainly is a growing landscape of technology that can that can uh, address these technical challenges and problems, but we're still very new. And you know what we've tried to do is make sure that this is as easy to get started and as easy to use as possible. It doesn't encroach on the game development or the creation of the game. Um, and again, it kind of 
over time, over the next six months to a year, hopefully becomes more and more invisible uh, as well, where it just kind of fits into the the flow of what you're doing and what you're creating. So we have a team that's here to support, um, but the tech should be really quite easy to get started with and, and straightforward if you understand game engines. Awesome. Um, all right, I'm going to move forward to some questions about our upcoming launches that we kind of dropped alongside this announcement. So Limbo Sport asks, um, will you be able to test and collect NFT items in the upcoming launches of spaces on the Lamina One Hub? Um, I don't know, Gordon, do you want to give us kind of a little bit of a sneak preview on what to expect? Yeah, so I think that the, um, yeah, the, way, the way that we think about it is... The, you know the 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 user experience has to have a very high payoff, right? Like we're talking about the interoperability of assets, and we can get all kind of caught up in the technical specifications that are required to support that and how the systems integrate with one another. But at the end of the day, it's about having a rewarding experience, and so being able to collect NFTs, um, being able to use those NFTs in other places, the ability to combine NFTs uh, to kind of power up your experience. Um, whether that's kind of unlocking content or um, actually using the NFTs in the space um, is, is really what we think about. So there will, you know, there's certainly a big focus uh, in this area. Amazing. Um, Anunmai asks, um, is there like, I mean, you kind of already answered this a little bit, Gordon, but Anunmai asks, is there a plan for connecting Lamina One spaces together in a cohesive way in the future? For example, a big hub that is a space itself or a network of hubs that a developer could like opt into? So the our kind of initial focus is on using the Lamina One hub as that kind of central point of discovery and uh, in itself kind of a network of spaces and and uh, being able to understand, you know, what NFTs and assets you've collected, how you can use those assets, um, kind of the history of those assets across the spaces, how your friends might be interacting with those assets. Uh, and so, um, so really the hub is the kind of central point for everyone, whether you're a creator, a developer, or a user. Um, the nice thing about the kind of architecture of a shared public network like this with you know with, with a public ledger powering it is that anyone can build a similar experience because uh, ultimately assets and spaces um, are and identities are declared in a way that um, anyone can integrate with so we imagine people might want to create a space that um, is immersive and 3d that enables you to explore lamina one in a different way um, certainly certainly uh, the, the power of the blockchain is is that that's open to you to do that and it's completely permissionless. Uh, we, we certainly wouldn't want to stop you and couldn't even if we wanted to. Uh, so that's kind of how we think about it. We also, um, you know, there's also a need to support perhaps kind of in, uh, inter um, porting, teleporting between spaces. And, you know, if I'm in a space and there's a window into another space, uh, you know, kind of like you know, the, the, the hyperlink on a, on a web page today, you know, how do we mimic that hyperlink kind of experience within, uh, within space experiences so you can go from space to space to space. And it's all very transparent to you in terms of, um, you know, bringing your identity and your assets with you essentially as you, and your avatar as you do that. Uh, there are some challenges there in terms of supporting that type of capability. I know the OMA3, the Open Metaverse Alliance for Web3, um, uh, standards group is heavily looking at this area right now in terms of defining requirements in order to define technical specifications to support this. Uh, requirements include things like, you know, when I go to one space to another, uh, does the user need to identify themselves in a particular way? Like perhaps that space is an adult only space and so they need to ensure that you agree to their uh, policies, etc. cetera, um, for accessing that space. Um, and so things like this kind of make it a little bit more difficult um, uh, but it's it's not too dissimilar to what you deal with today when I go from one website to another and I have to, you know, agree to the terms and conditions of the website that I'm using um, in order to use it. And so, uh, you know, we, we see we see a need for these types of things um, happening within kind of spaces as well. Awesome. 
Um, Mark BS, what are the genres of metaverse spaces that Lamina One is going to be launching or sort of looking for? Um, you know, now that we've got this emergence toolkit ready and we're we're asking people to start experimenting with it, like what are we looking for? Well, we 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 kind of look across all the different domains that are really influencing culture. So whether that's gaming or fashion, music, film television, art, sports, literature, you know, and which are which are these spaces uh, or these um, areas where there's a huge amount of, uh, you know, user-driven content or kind of, um, you know, the creator create economy is really, um, really born around these, these kinds of uh, content areas. And so, uh, and, and, and gaming is, you know, certainly over the last 10 years or so really um, kind of hit and the next level in terms of how important it is um, in the context of these kind of uh, these categories, and there's a lot of interrelationship between these different categories as well. Because you know, I can be uh, creating a game, but the kind of the IP and the story and the assets that are being used in that game might have come from a film, uh, or might have come from um, a, a, another context where it was originally seeded. And so, this is why we think kind of interoperability of assets and the IP and the rights and royalties around those assets is really, really important because for someone that's really investing in, for a creator that's really investing in, and you know, defining, um, uh, defining uh, the, the culturally influencing kind of memes and objects and stories, it's really important that they have the ability to control how those things are expressed across these different, um, these different domains and different, different applications. Um, so yeah, large, largely kind of entertainment, I would say is a good way to think about it, but it really spans uh, any category where there is a huge drive for independent creatorship. Yeah, awesome. Um, and also uh, sort of related to, you know, aside from genres, uh, Michel DM is asking, um, what format are you looking for these spaces to be in? Like VR, browser, downloadable? Like, uh, is there any sort of like format that we're looking for? I think um, we think about what's the best way to get these experiences in the hands of as many people as possible. And um, so really it's, it's around accessing it through um, mobile or a browser. Um, and that could be, that could be, or it could be downloadable as well, obviously triggered through a browser download uh, or through an app store. Um, I think spaces within VR are a bit trickier really because of the distribution, like there's a really limited reach there. Uh, certainly, you know, most of the people that we know that are building kind of VR experiences really also think about how they might manifest that within uh, within a, you know, a flat screen experience within the browser um, or, or a downloadable application so they can reach as many people as possible. Uh, but certainly we're, we're starting, I think, with the, with the most impact to begin with. Um, and emergence and uh, maybe you guys want to talk a little bit about kind of how you think about this. Um, yeah, for for us, it right at this stage, it go, it goes back to the definition that we use for the metaverse is the internet built by game developers. Um, and if you look at the market, the developers are using these engines. There are some, you know big studios and publishers that have their own proprietary engines, but the, the independent world of game development is happening in, you know, these two engines. So that's, that's where we started. Um, there's really no limit in where these creations live once they're built. So distribution wise, if, if it's, you know, mobile or console, or those are, you know, kind of more future business decisions. There are certainly constraints right now for like the browser, you know, game engine experience is being accessed over the browser. There's pixel streaming, it's very expensive. And ultimately, in the grand scheme, the web's more accessible. And so these things will need to, you know, kind of work themselves out. Um, so we do, we do very much plan on opening up more and more so that things are more accessible. But at this stage, we've been, you know, kind of really focused on the, uh, the game engines whether that is built for AR, VR, gaming, um, whatever format gaming that is, or mobile, um, 
other than just the challenges when it comes to just, you know, kind of outright blocking things with wallets or, uh, you know, technical hurdles. We want to support this so that it goes everywhere. But um, at this stage right now and for like the next, you know, several months, there's definitely some limitations there. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we're building it piece by piece for sure. Um, Cardenas asks uh, for the emergence team, um, do you guys have any, any other future integrations or SDKs planned other than Unity on, in Unreal on, on your roadmap or any sort of like future developments to the toolkit that you want to talk about? Yes. Um, yeah, so uh, as for integrations, I don't know how much we can talk, but uh, I can talk about features. Um, so um, we're constantly trying to improve the DevX. Um, is, that's our main priority. Um, we are working on a improve basically improvements to EAS, which is our emergence avatar system. Um, we're currently trying to make it do VRMs better. Um, I don't know if we want to go into the technical details of what VRM is, but basically it's how we can do inter interoperable avatars. Um, but that's something we're currently working on. Um, we're currently working on our own index. Uh, I think that's an I think I can say that. Well, let's say that. I don't think Ryan cares, does he? <laughs> it no, I'm not saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're working on our own indexer, um, which is going to be great because we try to use everyone else's, and they all, uh, you know, they're, they're fine, but they they miss features that we really wanted. Like we wanted to find all the VRMs on the blockchain. And we couldn't find an indexer that would let us find specifically that file type and um, find all of them. So we decided we were going to build one. So we built one. Um, and that's coming up. We've not um, made all of the APIs for it yet, but we've actually got, we've actually indexed the entirety of um, a blockchain with it. So, and it continues to work. Um, I there are more features. I, I can't think of any that are concise enough to say right now. But yes, we are we are continuing no. development with it. That's awesome. I mean, honestly, like we've had our own sort of like indexer frustrations while building as well. So that's super exciting and interesting. We might follow up with you on that. Um, I've actually got some questions uh, in the chat right now, um, and some people having disagreements that I think maybe the emergence team can clarify a little bit, but JCO asks us, you know, what terms of service specifically, possibly royalties and fees, should creators expect from using the Emergence SDK? And Vlad is basically saying, like, Emergence is open or free for everyone, nothing pay. And uh, JCOS is going, you know, is this confirmed by the team? Like, so is Emergence free to use? Um, right now, the SDK itself is is free to use, yes. Yeah, it's, right. it's effectively free to use. I think there's a thing if if we if you make a game with like 10 million players and you destroy our free services by using it, we might be kind of annoyed. But that would also be really cool if you could make a a web three game with 10 million players. So um, yeah, if yeah, you if you make a game with 10 million players and put it on Lamina One with the Emergence Toolkit, like awesome, we'll owe you a debt of gratitude. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that would be rad. Yeah, um, but yeah like right, right, right now it's it's free to use. Um, you know, obviously looking to the future, we we do need to generate revenue. Um, how that looks, we haven't we haven't fully decided on it yet. Um, but you know, it'll be fair and equitable for everyone. Um, you know, we we fully believe in the Web three ethos um, around that. So you know, you shouldn't have any um, any concerns about us all of a sudden saying. It's going to cost you a thousand bucks a month because, you know, for a, for a basic user, that's just not not feasible. Um, but yeah, right now it's it's completely free. Download it, have a play around with it, show us what you've built, and you could earn some some XP that you might be able to convert into some Ometa tokens. Um, you might not be able to as well, just caveat, but you might be able to convert them into Ometa tokens down the line. 
Awesome. Um, also got a question in the chat from IS Poland who asks, uh, do you plan to introduce like the formation SDK for non-crypto users? I'm actually not familiar with this. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are, but just got that live in the chat and three fire symbols underneath it. So it seems like folks are curious. Do we know the answer to this or do we need to check it out? <laughs> uh, so where, where is this the it's in the chat uh, by IOS Poland do you plan to introduce the formation SDK for non-crypto users interesting uh, I don't know what that is I'm so. getting into live questions oh interesting well um, IOS Poland if you want to uh, share us a link to the formation SDK you're talking about in the chat um, feel free interested in it um, is that, is and that I the guess uh, AWS SDK cloud formation. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what comes up when I search for it. I don't. Hmm. Yeah, I'm that's what JCOS is wondering about. That. Yeah. I sort of read the question like, "Will you create or form <laughs> an SDK for <laughs> users?" Which I think is something that the team has already said that that is like a huge part of their vision, which is to make this as easy as possible for non-crypto users to focus on creating rather than yeah. messing with the specifics of Web3 tech. Totally, yeah. Um, also, Max Easy and someone with a bunch of numbers is their handle that I'm not going to read out loud here. Ask, um, you know, apart from Web3 integration, uh, are you guys on the emergent side planning for like Unity integration on on the mobile side as well? We got, we got a couple of questions about kind of like mobile integrations. So mobile. So so currently for it's worth mentioning for. for um, Emergence, we currently only support um, PC and Mac um, for both of them, for deploying on them. Um, we are, we have looked at mobile, but we kind of need to do a lot of ch other changes first. Um, like, I've actually had it running on an Android mobile phone, but it, it gets a bit awkward to log into because our current login system is you scan a QR code and then you're holding a phone and it says scan this QR code and you're like, huh? How do I, I need a mirror or something to scan it? So um, we need to basically rewrite our login system for mobile, but there is a plan for it, certainly. And there's also a plan for web as well, but again, there's differences there as well. Awesome. Yeah, Erasmus was like WebGO. So yeah, that's perfect. Um, yeah, and I think, I guess to kind of stop, it's been interesting, the chat feed has now sort of uh, gone into some discussion on, you know, when do we think the metaverse is going to happen? Obviously, we're laying the initial foundation of it right now, and there's a lot of building left to do, but I like kind of ending on like kind of big questions here in the AMA. So I guess, can we just do like a little bit of a round robin, like... Um, when do you guys think we're going to be able to, you know, transition into a more like metaverse kind of reality online? Um, how far up do you guys think we are? Um, just to kind of jump in on that one, I would argue mm -hmm. that um, we're kind of we we already have a metaverse, so to speak, um, right from. I think it was back in 1992 or 1993 when email first started. To an extent, that became a metaverse, like a, a communication layer where you don't have to be in the same place. And that kind of set the foundations for what we're now building with immersive reality projects um, and you know, really being able to communicate and build your own identity behind it. Um, but I would argue like the building blocks have been been here for for a few decades now, but um, what, how does the expression go? Slowly, then suddenly. Um, so, you know, it's taken us a long time to get here, but I think the upward trajectory on what's possible and um, how engaged people will be with that um, as a kind of alternative reality will become very, very um, prominent soon. Yeah, if, if you look at the anyone dynamic... else have thoughts? Yeah, if you look at the dynamics of the mental model of the metaverse is not so far different from any other revolution. You look at the agricultural revolution or the industrial revolution, and there's, it's very difficult to pinpoint 
like a singular point at which that started it, it's if you're living through it it's it's something that's gradual agricultural took very long time industrial was a bit quicker because the technology sort of made things more efficient and now we're doing this again digitally we had the internet um and so the internet is a early stage of what we call the metaverse so it's um in a lot of ways we've had it conceptually we're now having it a little bit more practically um but i think what the question's asking is like you know the ready player one idea of running around with an avatar and being able to kind of like walk through all of these different worlds and i think next year will be the first year for that wow next year i will that's awesome <laughs> As someone who's been spending my entire life on Baldur's Gate when I'm not working, um, I really hope that that's the case because I love that. Um, <laughs> well, we've got about three minutes left. I need to make some closing uh, farewells to the community. Um, the first of which is to thank everyone for attending this AMA Live. I am just now about to drop the secret code in that you guys can redeem for Zealy XP. Um, I know that you guys are mostly here for the game engine conversation, but for those here for the code, um, I just dropped it into the chat. It's a uh, meta discovery, but with some numbers kind of thrown in there. Um, just make sure that you're copying and pasting it correctly, that the zeros, uh, that it's a zero, not an O, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank you all so much for joining. Um, next week, Open Metaverse Discovery Month will officially kick off. So just again, as I kind of mentioned earlier, on Monday, we're going to be dropping information and instructions on how to participate in our first creator competition of Betanet. That'll help us uh, get ready to launch, you know, some of our first spaces on the Lamina One Hub later this fall. And also, um, just as another reminder, uh, signups are open now for our upcoming Unity and Unreal workshops with the Emergence uh, team. Those are going to be taking place on the Open Meta Discord on October 25th and 26th. Um, Chris will be with us joining. Uh, so will Will. Our SDK Kay lead, Joel, is also going to be with us. Um, and a couple of other folks from the Emergence team end. But, you know, that'll be a really nice uh walk through on you know how to exactly use the emergence to connect into lamina one if you're looking for you know more than just kind of the documentation and videos that we released this week it's going to be really exciting we'll do live q and a's um and uh just as like a reminder like we're going to be prioritizing developers for that you know who know game engines um it's not necessarily for total beginners um but again all of that information's in that invite that i just dropped um Stay tuned here and on the Open Meta Discord for um, those CoQuest bounty initiatives, um, as well as, you know, more kind of news that we're going to be releasing as this month progresses. Um, as a side note, we also have a new Emergence SDK channel on our Discord um, where you can reach out to ask questions, submit feedback anytime. Uh, we're going to be, you know, we'll forward any of that interesting feedback or those questions to the Emergence team. So if while you're diving in with the toolkit, uh, you want to reach out, you can either, you know, hit us up on that channel or again, uh, join the Open Meta Discord where you can, you know, contact them directly about all of this stuff. Um, Thank you so much, Chris, Ryan, Alistair, Gordon, Will. Uh, it's been a really great conversation. I think everyone's like really excited. Uh, had a bunch of comments in the chat that this one was really technical and had a lot of meat to it. So really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you so much for having us. Really appreciate it. And everyone listening in, thank you so much for tuning in. And have a fantastic weekend. Yeah, happy Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. See ya.